church. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. That sounded pretty good. Let me say it one more time. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I really had to ask. I can tell you're glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And let's give the Lord Jesus one mighty hand clap and praise the Lord. Springtime is almost here, yep. and we're looking forward to it. And I tell you, no better day than to be in the house of the Lord. And I'm so glad to be gathered today and honored the privilege of so many places all over this world don't have this opportunity today to gather. They some have to go down in the caves and the dens and underground, but we in America have the freedom and the liberty for now. To gather in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I'm so grateful for it today. And glad to be with you and all your smiling faces. And, and uh, so many missing and are not here for whatever reason. And many sick. And we want to lift them up to the Lord. And uh, But you and I are here today. And uh, that's wonderful. But even better than that, the presence of the Lord is in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to have a great time to raise the Lord. Aren't you glad that you woke up and got yourself ready? And I could tell the most, most of you, if not all of you, combed your hair and you brushed and soaked your teeth and uh, took a shower and a weekly shower and you're here this morning and, and you like being with the Ronnie back there, you combed your beard and uh, trimmed up and you're looking good today. Looking and, uh, good. Yeah. and so we come ready to have, I've been come expecting God to do something. Amen. Right? Right. Right. Expecting that blessing. And now it's one thing to come to the house of the Lord and to just come. But when you come praying up and expecting God to move and do something great, that's a whole other realm. Hallelujah. Wow. And so we come this way expecting God to do great and mighty things. Just uh, real quick, and we want to welcome all those watching by Facebook or the Internet. And uh, we just pray that God will move right there where they are, the same as he's moving here. And uh, I want to say real quick, the uh, food pantry uh, needs cooking oil, and so uh, you put it in the tote in the back. Is that for the uh, bowling park? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so if you got some extra cooking oil or whatever, uh, bring it. If you want to donate some, you can bring it, put it in the tote in the back. Tonight at 5.30, I want you to come back be with us, Brother Nick Bills. Raise your hand, Brother Nick, in case nobody knows <laughs> We'll be here preaching tonight, and uh, we're glad to have him and his wife, Taylor, with us. And uh, they'll be back tonight. He's going to be preaching the Word of God, and we're looking forward to it. So come back, spend the afternoon, pray. And, uh, you know, I've, I've had to learn on Sundays now. I, I know every day is important living for the Lord. But now Sunday's the day and people just, they, they put off everything through the week and they'll do whatever they want to and then Sundays they go out and just do whatever and they say, well, we ain't got no time through the week and, and Sunday's our only day to do anything. Well, then you've become too busy. Amen. 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 And so uh, Sundays, you know, I've learned, I've had to discipline myself to make Sunday the Lord's day, and I spend that day dedicated to the Lord, praying and inquiring of the Lord many times for Sunday evenings and services. And so I encourage you today, spend your Sunday praying, praying for the service tonight. And I know Brother Nick would desire your prayers tonight as he comes to preach the Word of God. And I'm glad to have my backup over here. It's been a long time since we've had some backup over here. And I'm glad to have them. I'm glad to know that if I need a, a tag-in partner, that I can just reach over to my left and make a tag. And one of them just steps in. And maybe both of them step in. And so that'll be tonight at 530. I want to say March the 12th. It's coming up quick. And I want you to begin to invite and, and tell your family, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell all over. And we're going to have a night of anointed gospel singing in this house, March the 12th. The spirituals will be here and, uh, and the Kellys from Lawrenceburg, Tennessee. So two of some of the most anointed singing, singers that you'll ever hear on this side of heaven. And so they'll be here that night. We're going to have a great time. Let's see if we can't pack this place out. 
that night. Amen. And I guarantee you we're going to uh, receive a blessing that night from the Lord. That's March the 12th at 5.30, our Sunday evening service. March the 15th, we're going to be at Leftwich Hall over here. And uh, we need to be there at what time? They're going to let me know. Okay, that be that be to be determined. And uh, we're going to be cooking over there that morning and at Leftwich Hall. That's on a Wednesday. And uh, to cook, uh, that's for like, uh, uh, anybody, wants anybody wants to come? Seniors, 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 anybody wants to come? Anybody, come on your lunch break if you're working. Amen. And uh, come and eat. We're going to be uh, volunteering and cooking lunch uh, that morning. So uh, uh, this Wednesday night's business meeting. So come and be a part of the business meeting if you desire. Uh, also, we are taking up donations, uh, piano funds for the uh, piano. We're going to be purchasing a new piano. And this one's getting wore out. And uh, it's like, uh, like us. Gets more out. <laughs> Things get more out. And yeah. so uh, if you want to put uh, towards that, thank you, Miss Teresa. I knew he's good for something. Uh -oh. <laughs> so <laughs> so we, uh, we, if you want to uh, put a donation towards the piano, do as the Lord would lead you in that. And, uh, and so to, uh, also we announced Wednesday night that May the 4th through May the 6th was our spring revival meeting. Mark it down. Make your plans to come. And uh, we're going to be gathering 6.30 each night. Brother Caleb Cowan is going to be our evangelist that week. If you've not heard Brother Caleb preach, he just surrendered to call him to preach uh, uh, several months ago, I guess. I, I watched it as I do. I, I, I have to know before I get anybody to preach what they stand for and what Amen. they stand on. And I watched some videos of him preaching, and I'm telling you, I was surprised. And uh, what a blessing it was. And he's going to bless us that week through the Lord. And uh, so May the 4th through the 6th, and him and his wife and her brother will be singing some through that week. And that's May the 4th through the 6th. You have no excuse now. You know way ahead of time. Amen. May the 4th through the 6th. Mark that down. And if you're desiring a spiritual refreshing and reviving, come that week. But, uh, let me say this. I believe we're going to have one this morning. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I believe every service ought to be a revival meeting. That's the way I've always looked at it. I believe we come to church and it ought to be like revival. We ought to leave. Even if you're saved and a child of God, we ought to leave different than when we came in. Whether we're convicted or encouraged or exhorted or whatever it might be, we ought to leave different than we came in. Hallelujah. And we've got a God this morning who can change all your circumstances. He can change your situation. There is nothing my God cannot do. He's the God that cannot fail. Hallelujah. If you put your faith in Him, I guarantee you by His Word, He'll do something mighty on your behalf. He's the God that'll work on your behalf. He's not against you. He's the God that is for you. Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning and uh, what we're going to do this morning, I want all the cannon Let's gather around this altar and have a time of prayer to the Lord and bring your needs to Him. And I got a text message from Sister Haley this morning, and they are uh, they had to be called up to Louisville. Some of Jacob's family they're dealing with something, and she wouldn't say. And uh, but the Lord knows the whole situation, so we praying for them. And they are making their uh, traveling their way up there this morning. And so let's be praying for them and lift them up. Let's pray one for another. And uh, let's pray that God would touch you, the one to the left of you and the one to the right of you. Let's pray for the lost this morning, those that are right now bound by sin. And we know because we're children of the Most High God, we know the uh, consequences.
consequences of dying without the Lord. Right. And it's an eternal lake of fire, a place that is forever for those that deny and reject the blood of Jesus Christ. And we ought to have a desire in our hearts not to see one soul die in that condition. We need to be praying. And I'm a firm believer this morning that prayer changes things. Yes. Prayer changes situations. Yes. And when you take it to the Lord, pray in faith. That's what God honors is when you pray in faith. Somebody say, what is faith? Faith is taking God and His Word. word. Yes. And you pray in faith believing. Lord. Some people pray already determining the outcome. They pray not even believing that God can do it. Right. They're just praying with words. But if you pray in faith believing that God can do it and we will do it. He's done it before. And if He's done it before, He certainly can do it today. He's the God that never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if you got the faith to believe it, God can do it. Can you say it? morning pray for the sick and all those that you know of that are sick pray for all those that come to your mind this morning and let's gather around this altar all the can and wood and if you can't or, or don't come to this altar pray pray right there where you are in your seat and God will hear you it's not how loud you pray some pray loud some pray silently it's not a matter how loud you pray God hears the heart and so pray from your heart this morning Heavenly Father, we come before you today in that mighty matchless name, the name that is above every name. And God, we come before you today, Lord, recognizing that you are glorious in all of your holiness, that you are the God that can. You're the God of the impossibilities, Lord. And God, we see too much of your mighty working hand. Lord, I'm the faith that God's taking to it. And Lord, we
just go ahead and take up our Sunday morning tithes to the Lord. And uh, praise the Lord. Let's give to the Lord this morning. And uh, let's give with a cheerful heart today. And all of this goes to the advancement of the kingdom of God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you today, God, for provision. We thank you for your many blessings. And God, we recognize you this morning as the source of all our blessings. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. And God, we recognize the blesser today. And Lord, we ask you that you would bless the gift and bless the giver today. Multiply, give, increase, Lord, in abundance. And we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Page 298.
you, but I think I do by your countenance. Thank God. You just as excited as I am. And I'm telling you, when we get there, you ain't going to have to worry about no more pain. Amen. You ain't going to have to worry about no more sickness. Amen. You ain't going to have to worry about no more trouble. Right. You ain't going to have to worry about no more tears. Hallelujah. Right. You ain't going to have to worry about no more pain. No more death. Hallelujah. Yes, For the last enemy that shall be defeated will be dead.
troubles. We got a lot of pain, a lot of heartache, and there's distress, there's oppression and depression. But if you're a child of God, you ought to look at the devil and say, Satan, I'm just here in this for a little while. But there's laid up for me a crown in heaven. Not for me only, but for all.
Praise God, praise God. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Asking in that presence. You can't get excited about leaving this whole wicked world. And going to a better place, and there's something wrong. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We got something that I'm talking about the saints of God. We got something to look forward to. Amen. And you walk around in this world, and there's people that are just full of hatred. And they'll, they'll stab you in the back when you turn around yep. and corrupt and crooked people. And I'm going to a city where no thieves can enter in. Hallelujah. And I am laying up treasures there. That's right. Where moth cannot eat, rust cannot decay. And these will never break in and steal. Right. Those treasures are guarded by the Lord Jesus. And I'm looking forward to going home. My Lord, if I can get to the message, I've got a message to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, maybe we'll get it in the third hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take your Bibles with me this morning. Turn with us to the book of Psalms, chapter 23. Psalms 23. And I pray the word of God bless you this morning. In the name of Jesus. Psalms 23. And if you can, let's stand one more time for the honor and the reverence of God's holy, mighty word, his inerrant word. I've never found a mistake in all of his good word. Amen. Amen. Psalms 23, I want you to go down to verse 5. And the Bible says, David writing says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup surely this morning is running over. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not just every now and then. Not just when it feels convenient. But all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now I want to go back to that verse 5. And I want to minister on a subject this morning. The king's table. The king's table. David said, Thou, O Lord. Has prepared, has prepared Amen. a table before me. Amen. And all God's children has a table prepared before them. Right. Heavenly Father, I ask you this morning for your mighty anointing to preach your word. And Lord, not one word that you put in my mouth would fall to the ground. But God, this morning, you would use me as your channel, your conduit, God, that your people would be blessed today. And use me as your vessel, God. Move me out of the way, Lord, and hide me behind Calvary's cross. That, Lord, your cross would be seen, Lord Jesus. And, God, your presence would be sensed. And, Lord, use me as if it were you yourself here preaching and I pray that the words you have given me to declare this morning would go forth with great power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit and God that it would find a place in our hearts that Lord it would penetrate us to the foundation of our soul that God it would lift us up that it would encourage us it would convict us maybe whatever your desire is today let it be done and your purpose be accomplished and we ask it all in Jesus mighty name and all God's people said amen. amen and amen praise the Lord I want to preach for a few moments this morning on the king's table I'm glad I pulled up to the king's table I'm glad I'm feasting from the table of the king today I how many knows what I'm talking about? Amen. I'm glad, hallelujah, that I don't just pull up to it on Sundays. Right. But I'm there every day of the week. At all moments of the day, I pull up to the king's table. I believe that David wrote this song in a time in his life when he was fleeing away from Saul, his enemy. I believe it was written when David was going about in the caves and the dens and he was hiding. And David wandered from place to place. He was exiled from his own people. And David felt all alone. 
and David would write this and he would go back to the days when he was a little shepherd boy back there on the hillsides in the country out there tending to the box and he said the Lord is my shepherd hallelujah he is my shepherd and because of that I shall not want and I found hallelujah since he became my shepherd I have never lacked
said that he anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. And I'm telling you, I told somebody earlier that your excitement is contagious. And I look out here and I look on your faces and your countenance. And I'm glad I'm not part and have to preach to a cold, dead congregation. And let me tell you, I look out. And I see your joy and your excitement, uh, and it's contagious. Uh, and you get mad at me for preaching for three hours. Uh, no. It's your fault uh, because you can't be on. Hallelujah. Because you're hungry for the word of God. And because of that, my cup is running over Amen. this morning. And my cup is running Hallelujah. Surely, His goodness and mercy. Which is what I desire. Yes. Will follow me all the days of my life. And I've got a made up mind. I'm going to dwell. I'm going to dwell. I said I'm going to dwell. In the house of the Lord. Forever. Hallelujah. Because it's there. I have found the table. It's there. I have found the banquet. It's there. I have found the peace. That you can pull up to the king's table. And you can eat uh, of the king's meat. Uh, and you'll never thirst again. Uh, you'll never be hungry again uh, for the things of this world. Uh, everyone that comes to this table uh, always leaves filled uh, and satisfied. Uh, my Lord, I wish I could get a witness in this place. The church didn't prepare, but the Lord prepared a table. It's the king's table. And when you think about a table, when you pull up at supper time, and you pull up to eat and sit at that table, when you go out to eat and you pull up and sit at the table with your family, your friends, that table speaks of communion. That table speaks of fellowship. Hallelujah. And when you pull up to the table of the Lord, you can have sweet fellowship and uh, communion with the Lord. Uh, and Amen. there's nothing better in the world uh, than pulling up to the table Amen. of the Lord Amen. and feasting on the goodness Amen. of all of The world has many tables. I said the world has many tables. Right. And one time in my life, I was sitting at the day of devil's table. I sat there and I'd have to go back because I never could get satisfied. I never could get what I needed. I never could even get what I wanted. And I always came back to the devil's table. But I'd leave just like I came. I would leave even worse than what I came. I but one Sunday morning, I found the table. Hallelujah. One Sunday morning, I walked into the church house doors of South Somersville Baptist Church. I tell you, they say you can't get saved in a Baptist church. You come by too late to tell me that. I walked in that old Baptist church. I went the Baptist that saved me. It was just where I was at. I went up to that altar. I was wicked. I was defiled. My soul was polluted because I'd been to the devil's table. But I found the table that morning. And I went up to the altar, an old-fashioned altar. And I knelt down on my knees in prayer. And I called out to God in repentance. And I said, Lord, forgive me of my wickedness. Forgive me of my sin. I was a drunkard. I was an alcoholic. I was a drug addict. I was filthy. But I got up that morning and I found me a seat. And And the bride 
began to sing a song of song and said that he has brought me to the banqueting house. I said he's brought me to the banqueting house because at that table there's a banquet that's prepared and he brought me to the banqueting house. He said the bride sung to the house of wine. Now that's not wine to get drunk on. Wine represents joy. I found at that table a house of joy. I found joy at the king's table. That's a For all they that take at the age and eat at the Lord's table, and at the same time the table of the devils. All Paul said, You can't drink of the cup of the Lord at the cup of devils. You can't drink and eat at the table of the Lord and at the table of devils. You can't have two masters. You love one, hate the other. But honey, there's something about the king's table. And it's a and it'll meet every hunger, every need, every thirst you have. He has prepared a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. Now, I don't know if David quite preached it like that, but I kind of like that. When I think about in 2 Samuel chapter 9 that David and Jonathan had made a covenant out in the field. And David said, I, I'm making a covenant with you. I'm glad that we got a covenant made. Yes, hallelujah, the new covenant. And there's a mediator of that new covenant. His name is Jesus. But David had made a covenant with Jonathan. And Jonathan said, David, when you come to the throne in Israel and you become the king, I want you to remember my family. I want you to remember my kinfolk. And then David said, Jonathan, I'll show kindness to all your household. Yeah. I'm glad God showed kindness to me one day. Yeah, and David when he got to the throne and he sat on the throne in his palace in his kingdom there in Israel. He first thing he thought, he said I want you to go out and I want you to see if there's any of the household of Saul and the household of Jonathan. Yeah. And I want you to go out and get them and bring them to me. And one came and said there's one that's left. Yes. Hallelujah. His name is Mephibosheth. That name Mephibosheth means a shameful thing. Hey, they said he's Mephibosheth, but he's crippled. He's lame. He's broken. He ain't much worth much. He's useless. And David said, I want you to go fetch him. That's what the Bible says. Yes. David said, right. go fetch him. I'm glad that God sent the Holy Spirit Woo! by my oh, way yes. one day. And he fetched me yeah. and he gave me an invite yeah. to the master's table. Glory to God. They went out and they got my feather shed. They said he's down there in Lodibar. Lodibar's name means a desert place. I was in a desert place when I was lost and in this world. And they went down there to Lodibar. And God came right down to where I was in the depths of my sin. Don't tell me you've gone too far. Don't tell me you've been too bad. Don't tell me you so far sunk in the sin that God won't love you and bring you out. His arm is not short enough. He can't reach down right where you are and bring you. Are you listening this morning? No matter what your situation is, God can reach down way down. They got Mephibosheth, and I can just picture. Now, Mephibosheth knew he was worthy of death. He knew because of his lineage, he was worthy of death. And because of my lineage and your lineage, we were worthy of death. Yeah. I'm talking about Adam's lineage. Right. We lost every privilege we had in God and Adam. But the second Adam came. Yes, and yes, everything we lost in the oh, first Adam, yes, we regained at Calvary's cross on yes, yes, the second Adam. Amen. And I felt the same way my feather shift felt. And one time I was crippled in my life. I was a beggar. 
I was broken, I was lame. I couldn't walk right. Come on, somebody. I couldn't walk right. But the king sent and fetched me.
Amen. Have to go through all these hardships and things and, and just be down in the dumps. Uh, you ain't got what I got. Amen. And you need to study the word of God Amen. and see the promises he has for us here and there. That's right. Amen. I ain't waiting to get to heaven to pull up the table. I'm at a table now. Praise God. Stay here. Praise Soon God. I must be gone. And when I leave, the Bible tells me there's another table being prepared. Yes. Glory, and glory, glory. Hallelujah. I'm talking about another yes. supper that's being prepared. Oh. I'm talking about a banquet that's getting yes. ready. Hallelujah. I'm talking about a feast Thank getting ready to come. Praise I God. believe Praise over there at that table. Yes. I've got a chair at that oh. table. Jesus 
goes back to God because these reject him. And then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. And yet there is room, hallelujah, and I tell you this morning, uh, there's room at the table. I said there's room at the king's table. I said there's room at the king's table for you and for me and our families and our neighbors and our friends and our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. There's room at the table. And he said, come and dine. Come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. All the time. And then I would serve a half-time God. Amen. Hallelujah. But you can feast all the time. And you'll never run out at this feast. You'll never run out at the table of the Lord. In Matthew 15, there was a little Canaanite boy that came to Jesus. And she was crying out to the Lord, have mercy on me. And she said, my daughter's been vexed with a demon. She was a Gentile woman. And at that time, Jesus had come to his own. And he came to the lost sheep of Israel, he said. And she was a Gentile. And so she said... He said, it's not fit to give the food that belongs to the children and give it to the dogs. But let me tell you, this woman had a faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I said, this woman had a faith. Amen. And her faith wasn't going to let her quit. Amen. I said, her faith wasn't going to let her stop. Amen. She kept pressing. Yes. And faith will make you press in yes. even more. Yes. And she said, the Lord, even the dogs, even the dogs eat the crumbs yes. that fall from the master's Amen. table. I can just get the crumbs. But hallelujah, he didn't promise me crumbs. Oh, no. amen. Glory to God. Amen. He didn't promise crumbs. He didn't promise you and I leftovers. He said there's a banquet. And there's a table. And there's a chair for you. And he has prepared a table before me. I really do. I would trade it for all the money in this world. If I had to lay my life down for the cause of his kingdom, I've counted the cost. And I'm willing to lay it down. A lot of people have been concerned. If I have a heart attack preaching, so be it. I'll go out, hallelujah, in the way that I love more than anything. I love preaching the word of God. It's my passion. It's my zeal. And I love sitting at the table of the king and feast on the goodness of the Lord. And I found at his table there's a never-ending supply of joy. There's a never-ending supply of peace. There's a never-ending supply of satisfaction at the king's table. There's a never-ending supply of contentment and all and all fear is left outside. Amen. Oh, thank you. Glory to God. Now, let me ask you this morning. Are you feasting at his table? Hallelujah. Are you feasting at his table? Glory to God. I'm talking about when you get up in the morning. The Lord is your first thought. What a life to live. So many today, and it's a tragedy I see in our churches. They've got their mind on other things beside God. And they worry about this and they worry about that. And Jessica told me this week she just joked around, I hope, with me. And she asked me something, you got an answer for everything. 
I, I don't know. I've got the answer. Hallelujah. And the answer to all of life's problems right. is found at the table. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 Down at the table. Amen. When you got problems in the church, there's an answer. Amen. When you got problems in your home, there's the answer. Amen. When you got problems in your family, there's an answer. Amen. And when you got problems in your life, there's an answer. Amen. And the answer is the shed blood of Jesus Christ right. at Calvary's cross. Woo. It's Amen. the answer for all. Nothing but satisfaction oh, and joy in the Lord. It's my strength. Amen. And I love getting up in the mornings and living in the new mercies of the Lord every day. And living this Christian life. Somebody said, you mean you really enjoy life? I sure do. Yes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Most mornings, I get up and I got a missed call from my brother Nick Fields. <laughs> and I get the phone as soon as I have a chance and I'll call him back and most usually the conversation centers around the Lord and let me tell you something when I go out working or I'm with people and I know even church folk some that gets on their nerves because you talk about the Lord all the time but let me tell you this I'll just tell you, i got an answer for this. Right. Let me just tell you, it may get on your nerves when you're around me. And I'll talk about the Lord every breath and every sentence. Right. But that's all right. Amen. Because let me tell you, there's not the one thing on my mind. Amen. And it's the Lord Jesus. Right. And there's a reason for it. It's because He has prepared a table. And I'm seated at that table. Amen. And I'm on the spiritual blessings that come from heavenly places. And if you don't like it, then just get away from it. Praise Amen. Lord. Amen. 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 And if you get right with the Lord, you'll enjoy it as much as I do. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And people call on me to pray at meals and things. And they, when I pray, and I believe in praying, Somebody wants me to bless the food, then you you better you better gird yourself and get ready. Because I'm getting ready to pray. Amen. If you don't like it, don't call me to pray. When I pray, I'm coming before the Lord. And I'm coming in power and the grace of God. And uh, you never know what you're eating a lot of times. And you better pray over that food. And you better pray over that chicken if you haven't eaten it. Because a lot of places now get salmonella in the place. That's right. Amen. Uh, we, we was at yesterday eating and some of the workers now, I mean, they have to stretch, stretch to get the employees. And it looked like all of them just burnt up where we was at yesterday. And they didn't have no clue where they was even at. And they didn't have no clue where our table was at to bring our food out. But I'm glad I've got a table. And my server at this table Amen. knows exactly where I'm at. Amen. And he comes oh, and he serves me oh, at the king's table. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. Now we're going to wrap it up because I'm starting to melt, Brother Jackson. Hallelujah. Uh, Glory to God. I'm thankful for the king's table. Amen. How about you? Praise the Lord. And there's one day we're going to pull up to another table. To the king's table. It's going to be a different type of setting, yeah. but it's the king's table. And we're going to pull up there in a glorified I'm body. High, yeah. And I'm going to pull up that table. And you've been saved, we're going to pull up that table. Every care you had in this life, it's just going to be a distant memory. That's right. Won't even think about it. That's no right. more. We're going to pull up there. And the Bible says in Luke 12, 13, 29. That they're going to gather there. They're going to come from the east. They're going to come from the west. They're going to come from the north. They're going to come from the south. And they're going to sit down in the kingdom of God. Yes. And we're going to sit there at that table. And we're going to feast. And if you can't get along with your brother and sister in Christ here, 
You better start making amends now. Because you may be sitting right next to them at that table. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And so this, we're going to sit down and the Bible says he's going to serve us. That's right. Amen. 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 Me, who crippled, lame, and broken. When I pull up to that table, you're not going to see that cripples. And I'm going to sit there. And the king of all kings oh, is going to come and serve me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. What a blessed thought. Yes. That's how much he loves us. Yes. Glory to God. Lord. I'm thankful for the king's table. Amen. I'll be glad to have the king's Amen. table. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to be prepared. The right king's prepared. And there's room. Sister Trace, if you come, the old song says, no man's to come, there's still room for one. The king's table is growing every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you prepared a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. He's anointed my head with oil. My mind is saturated with the Holy Spirit. And my cup is running over. Amen. You have to forgive me if sometimes I get a little excited. But you've got to realize, if you seen where I was before I saved, you'd understand why I've got so much to be thankful for. Amen. Why I've got so much to be excited about. Why I'm so thankful. If I've been a little loud, you just take a look over me. Because I think about where I've been and what I was and where I'm at now. Glory to God. I get a little happy. Just look beyond it. Hallelujah. You just knew my life and the shape it was in before the Lord saved me. You'd understand why I'm so thankful to be at the king's table. Well, there's plenty. Well, there's plenty. If you just knew and saved my life, You'd understand why I shout. You'd understand why sometimes I have to jump and run and hop and skip. It's because my cup is running over. And surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. Now in Hebrew translation, it could be translated not surely goodness and mercy, but only only goodness and mercy. Amen. Only His goodness and mercy will follow me the days of my life. And I declare, I will dwell. I declare there's no turning back now. What have we got to, what have we got to gain in this world? I, I'm holding on to that gospel plan. And I'm not looking back. Hallelujah. I want to keep on going. And there have been times, hallelujah, dark filled. And the devil has tried to trick me and make me to turn back. But I want to be fit for the kingdom of God. I've got too much for game to lose. I'm sitting at the king's table. I'm not sitting at your table or the world's table. I'm sitting at the king's table. Yes, amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you, God. Oh, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord, for your matchless, awesome grace and your mercy that has kept me. I thank you, Lord, for the invite to your table. And I thank the Lord to be seated at that table. Lord, even in the wilderness of this world, you have 
could furnish the table for your children. Or we could pull up and dine and eat and feast at this banquet on all the spiritual blessings that come from the heavenly place. And I'm so thankful, Lord, as Paul said, to be raised up and made to sit with Jesus in those heavenly places. And I want to live this life here, Lord, in victory, overcoming every obstacle and every enemy, every storm, every mountain. And I'm thankful, God, that no enemy can touch my table. I'm thankful the world can't take nothing off of this table you prepared. And Lord, I pray this morning for every soul, every individual in this building. Lord, I sense there's heartache in this place in some capacity. But God, today I pray that with your arms of love and mercy and kindness and grace, that you'll extend those arms and pull them into your bosom. And God, that you'll just speak love and peace to their storm and to the storm that rages round about. And Lord, may we ever be continuously feasting at the King's table. God, I thank you and praise you for provision that you've made us and designed us to be victors. God, for those that have their hands hanging low, Lord, lift their arms and lift them up and lift their heart that is bowed low. And should there be any in this place that have never been saved, they have no understanding of what we just spoke of this morning. I pray that, God, you would convict them and bring them and draw them to that place of realization, Lord, that they are lacking God. And the only answer is the blood of your Son, Jesus, that was shed at Calvary's cross that can wash them clean and make a brand new creation out of them. Lord, we give you thanks and praise for it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. ask you to stand all over the building this morning. As we get ready to sing with the David page, page 46, and if you need to come and pray, I want you to come to this altar. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. But come to this altar. Just coming to this altar won't satisfy the need. But you're coming before the Lord and you're showing Him that you mean business. And if you've got troubles and problems right there where you are, bow to Him there. Cry out to Him. If you need a need prayer, come on. Come on, that's the same.
reach for every head bowed and every eye closed in this place. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe this morning you're just not comfortable stepping out of your seat and coming down and praying. I don't leave this place if you're heartbroken and you're dealing with things without giving you an opportunity. And I know and understand it's hard to step out of our comfort zone many times. So while you're there standing or you may be seated or whatever the case may be, we're going to pray right there where you are standing. Every burden you have, every weight that you have is holding you down. As we begin to pray, I want you to lift it up to the Lord and surrender to Him. We ought not, not one of us, leave this place burned down and weighed down because He's prepared a table before you. And you can come there now. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again in Jesus' name. Lord, we understand this morning that it's hard for many to step out and make their way down an aisle and kneel down before people and before you. But this morning right there where that soul is that's hurting and that soul that is heartbroken, as they're crying out to you, God, in faith, I pray that, Lord, you'll come down and release them out of that bondage in that prison house and rescue them, God. And, Lord, that you'll bring them into that banquet table. And, Lord, that you'll bring them, as the song of Solomon said, into the banquet house, the house of joy. Lord, that you'll replace that spirit of heaviness with the all of joy and the all of gladness. And God, that you'll be and give provision for every need. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. If you feel better than what you did when you came in, give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Give it to Him. His bride to the ever at his side, all the hopes that heaven will soon will be. Oh, it will be a glorious sight, all the saints of the sky.